Hi, welcome to our very first interview for our Pacific Personalities uh, people. Um, this is Ms. Gladys Habu. She's our first participant for our first ever interview slash podcast. Hi, Gladys. How are you? Hi, Sabrina. It's so lovely to meet you. I'm good. Thank you. It's so good to see you. It's been ages. I miss how How solo? Um, yeah, it's, it's good. I think same, same. Yeah. Yeah, what's the weather like? I'm pretty sure it's way better than Sydney. Um, it has been a bit weird. It's raining and then sunny and then raining and then sunny, so. Yeah, I mean. But that's the only two seasons we get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. Um, you, you're an Australian scholarship awardee. You've been studying here in Melbourne for ages before um, ever applying for that scholarship, you know, you had other um, options out there. What made you choose Aussie? Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess, you know, I, I strongly feel that having a family who who saw value in you know, investing into education had always challenged me to sort of do my best to excel. And growing up in a third world country also meant that from a very young age, I realized the significance. Oh my God, sorry, dogs are back in. <laughs> um, yeah, so growing up in a third world country also meant that from a very young age, I realized the significance of performing well, both in school and outside of school, because securing a scholarship was the only best way for me to get into tertiary education. So. Therefore, I was never really choosy about which scholarship to get. Um, so I applied for every scholarship that I was aware of that was available at the time. And I guess the Australia Awards um, scholarship program results came out early. And that's why I sort of got um, started into that before um, any other scholarship results came out. Um, and down, down the line, I realized, you know, um, that the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, which I initially wanted to do, was not possible for me to do in either Australia or New Zealand because of how expensive it was. So I chose pharmacy. And I think that was the best choice I've ever made in my life because looking back, I can definitely say um, that pharmacy had offered everything that I needed, especially at Monash University. Um, and just being able to um, get into the swing of things despite the substantial jump from a third world um, educational system to a first world educational system and still graduating with, with an honors degree um, was indeed a huge um, milestone in my career and i'm so grateful and humbled that i was able to do it at the second best university in the world for pharmacology um, uh, according to qs world rankings so yes i am humbled and thankful <laughs> Wow, that is pretty impressive. Like, you know, like like you said, coming from home and then coming out here, starting at the second um, best uh, pharmacology um, school out there. That's amazing, Gladys. Um, so yeah, come, like used to live, you used to live here and then moving back to um, Solo, was there any like Australian habits that you picked up along the way? And then probably going back home, like, you're still doing it there, like, you know, the whole cultural difference, cultural shock, and all that. Um, I mean, I can imagine you living here for four years and then going back, having to settle back in solo life. Um, did you pick up any habit here? Um, hmm. I guess using the word, like, I mean, using, like, mate or, you know, maybe boy, like, a lot. Um, but I guess I don't really have anything in particular. Um, because I'm quite good at blending into where I am. So I wasn't really putting myself out there to remind myself that I just came back from Australia. Um, so I don't really have anything like that. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, that's pretty good. I mean, the last thing you want to do is put yourself out there. It's like that girl that studied in Australia. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just anything. being humble. Yeah, that's good. Um, anyway, moving on to you being Miss um, Solomon Islands, pr prior to joining the pageant show, um, you know, what made you join it? And when you did, what did you learn from it? Sure. 
Uh, I guess, honestly, you know, being the only girl in the family and having to grow up my, with my brothers and also my cousins who were mostly boys never really triggered me to consider becoming a pageant ever, not even in high school. Um, so although it was a really strange idea, especially for my mom and dad, um, I chose to take on the challenge um, to join the Son Islands 2019 because I was kind of asked to go um, so by the oncology or cancer unit in um, the National Referral Hospital where I work. Um, so they they asked me to use the platform to advocate for female cancers, specifically breast and tobacco cancer, seeing that they are the two leading causes of death among cancer in Solomon Islands. Um, so I realized that it was a very important um, thing to do and I I knew that not many people were aware of the fact that we have the cancer unit and we've got basic treatment available. So I decided to take it up. And I also was able to um, establish the National Referral Hospital um, Cancer Unit Trust Fund, um, which was very useful um, as I gathered so much support from so many different organizations around the country who were willing to render their support towards the cancer unit. Um, and apart from that, just being able to utilize the Miss Solomon Islands platform to do other activities, especially in um, my climate advocacy as well. Um, so through all this, I've been able to enhance my skills in leadership, uh, you know, organization, public speaking, um, networking, just team building, um, even time management. But most of all, in being a strong woman of influence, I... I guess since I never really saw the importance of becoming Miss Solomon Islands before, I told myself that I needed to make this platform become something that the younger version of myself would see value in, especially in terms of providing an avenue for individual character building and an opportunity to give back to the country. Wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah, for those that who don't know, I'm pretty sure everyone know now, Gladys is a pharmacist. She also just received um, the Commonwealth Point of Light Award, which is amazing from the Queen and you're only 25. Um, and you're also Miss Solo. That's a lot, like a lot of stuff that you have to balance. You have a lot on your plate. What's your day to day? What does it look like? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I do wear many different hats and it can be very stressful. Um, but the most um, useful thing that I found um, that worked a lot with me is to have a to-do list and then just like mark everything as I go. So each time I, I had um, things to do or like I was invited to events or those sort of stuff, I would just um, mark them down in my calendar and then as I go, just take them off the list. Um, that way I, I am able to make sure I'm staying on top of things, staying organized and avoiding um, missing anything important. Um, but definitely it has been a great learning experience. The recognition from, from Her Majesty um, the Queen is indeed my highest honor and I'm humbled to have come this far. Um, but what I definitely learned for sure is when it comes to chasing you know, opportunities, um, I've, I've been able to um, carry myself a lot higher, um, but then eventually you, you, you stop chasing and so many opportunities just come your way. So I went from jumping on every single opportunity I was given to enhance my experience as much as possible to now ensuring that I only choose those that matter most and those that will benefit me in the long run, because I, I know it's, it's okay to say no sometimes, um, because because you don't want to burn out and you want your health to be your first priority. That is so true. Mental health is an actual serious um, thing and that's so good that you try to balance everything out and that's good on you, honestly. Um, so anyway, I've, I've watched and I know everyone else have watched all your um, interviews, the articles that have been put out about Kale Island and you know, you being a climate activist and everything. Um, and yeah, and it's so sad that, you know, many islands in the Pacific is um, underwater right now due to climate change. So the question here is, I mean, for you is what does climate change mean to you as a Pacific Islander, as a woman of um, colour, as a woman from the Pacific? What does it mean to you? Yeah, thank you. Um, 
the loss of Kale has indeed um, sparked a new drive in me to really do as much as I can to help advocate for the environment, um, especially in terms of real estate plan of action. Um, I guess having known that you know, our grandparents lived there once um, when the island was much, much bigger and you know, it was home to a lot of life um, and just seeing it come to complete non-existence in my lifetime is really sad. So the story of Kale is unique in that there are millions of people around the world who have never observed this in their lifetime. Um, but at the same time, there, you know, it is, it is also something that is not new to the Pacific, as you, you've said. Um, so climate change to me is what makes me question my future, our future, and the future of our planet. It is unfair that with all the unsustainable you know, human activities going on around the world in recent years, it is contributing a lot to accelerating this climate crisis. And our contribution um, from you know, Pacific Island countries is almost negligible, and yet we are the ones facing the impacts on the front line. So the sad, saddest thing is that our people are seeing it as though it is normal when it is not. And the impacts that we are facing due to climate change should never be, be seen as normal. So we need, or at least I believe that we need to be sharing our personal experiences of loss and damage by climate change so that we can support the scientific evidence that is out there that is helping people to make informed decisions. Um, and hopefully more and more people across the world can empathize, engage and support us in our fight for a, a climate safe future. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, what you said is pretty true. Um, you know, with people just looking around and saying, oh, yeah, that's normal. It happens. Like, you know, the land go up, like the water coming up, like that's normal when it's really not. Um, thank you for that. That's pretty um, important. So um, just like the three things, um, if you were if you were given the chance to talk to, you know, in, co uh, in big companies or just someone that has the power to make very big decisions, especially climate wise, what, are, what would be like the three things you'd want to say to them? Um, I guess if I were to talk to anyone um, and give them those three main things, um, the first one would be to avoid unnecessary plastic use and ensure that you know, they dispose any plastic waste properly. Second, to always ensure that you know lights or electricity or any, anything that is using energy at home um, is switched off when they're not used to avoid any unnecessary use. Um, and last um, is to understand that this climate crisis is real and it needs all hands on deck. So whether you are um, directly impacted by climate change or not, um, you know you live on this planet, and so therefore anything that is not well on this planet becomes your responsibility too. And um, together, we are the ones who are responsible for um, making a change for the betterment of our future. Thank you. So, okay, besides all this, you know, your career, your climate change activist, you, Ms. Solo, you, everything. The one last question. What is your favorite restaurant in Solo and why? Um, okay, this is a hard question, but I, okay, no, it's not a hard question. My favorite restaurant at this point is the Tenkai restaurant because it provides the best sushi in town. So highly recommend to anyone in Solomon Islands or anyone coming to visit Honiara, please check out Tenkai. <laughs> Oh, good. Definitely, definitely. Love a good sushi. Um, so anyway, thank you so much, Gladys, for answering all the questions. Um, and yeah, just ma uh, making yourself available to be our first guest. So thank you very much. We love to hear from you. And we can't wait to see the great things you'll do for Solo and the Pacific in general. Thank you very much. No worries. It has been an absolute pleasure pleasure. Thank you so much for considering me to be your first um, guest speaker. I appreciate it. And all the best in your work too.